Good morning, friendlies. I just wanted to do a little follow-up to yesterday's video about what happened to my mom. I uh, woke up this morning having a twang of regret about sharing something so personal. And then I looked at comments, and the first several comments I read were, Thank you so much. You saved people. I'm a 74-year-old woman. I would have done the exact same thing. Thank you for telling me about this. You you helped me. You saved people from getting scammed. And sometimes I need a little nudge to remind me why I do what I do, uh, why I share myself so openly, and why I share even the hard stuff. So thank you for that. I guess I have quite a bit I want to cover. I um, want to talk about the GoFundMe and I want to talk about the GoFundMe issue. I want to talk about uh, follow up on what happened after my mom talked to the police. I also want to talk about some more precautions that we took that will help you. And I'll save that for last. So uh, first of all, uh, let's talk about GoFundMe. A lot of you are, are wanting to help. You're wanting to um, right a wrong. And I, I understand that feeling. In fact... I was realizing, thinking yesterday, I was chatting with my friends, when I am uncomfortable, when there's something wrong, when I'm upset, my go-to reaction is fix it now. Sound familiar? That's exactly what my mother did. Fix it now. I have learned over the years to stop and breathe and think uh, a little bit and not be so impulsive, but still my first reaction is must fix it now. It's exactly what my mother did. You know, I am who I am because I learned so much from my mother. My mother's a different generation, didn't necessarily have the tools and skills to be able to listen to her gut, to be able to ask the right questions. I'm a product of that. And through a lot of work, I am now teaching my mother some of the skills I learned. So um, where was I going with that? Uh, my first instinct is just move. I move ahead, charge ahead. I, I need to fix this. And that's part of what the video was. I just wanted to right a wrong. The whole purpose of my video was I want to make sure this information is out there so that it doesn't happen to someone else. What these predators did is they preyed upon my mother's emotions about me to scam her. And I, I just went into uh, need, to, need to do something mode. And so I shared that video in order to spread awareness. I never, ever, ever intended it to be to help her recoup what she lost. I am not a fan of GoFundMe. Never have been. I get asked all the time from viewers who are falling on hard times to uh, to do GoFundMes. I'm just, I've never been a fan. In fact, I'll, I'll share this with you. I signed a contract for a uh, recent sponsor and halfway through the contract, I backed out. Actually, we never did sign a real contract, luckily, because it turned out they wanted me to promote a crowdsourcing campaign. I'm just not a fan. I wasn't going to do that. I'm just not a fan. So um, I am, I, I'm not going to do a GoFundMe. It's funny. I, when I, before I shot the video, I called my mother and I said, you know, I really want to do a video because I really think your experience can help other people. A lot of my audience are older people or have parents who are your age or older. And I think this will help people. Is it okay if I tell your story? And she's like, you're not going to have my, my name or my face or anything in it. I said, no, of course not. I won't do that. And she said, yeah, okay. And uh, so throughout the day we were talking and I saw the request, you know, please set up a GoFundMe. We want to help. And I said, no, I don't. That's not what this was about. I don't want to do that. And then I told my mother at some point, I was like, you know, a lot of people really want to help you. There's this thing called GoFundMe. And I had to explain it. She's like, no, that's not what. No, I don't want that. She said, I just want to help people. So. So I am not going to be setting up a GoFundMe account. Um, I really, really appreciate the thought. I re we both really appreciate. I've been reading her comments and it's making her feel better. Of course, there's a lot of shame and embarrassment about this, but mostly for her, she keeps saying it's not about the money. I can replace the money. It's just, I'm just glad you're okay. One other thing I want to, about the whole Go GoFundMe, one other point I want to make. I was a little... 
in shock yesterday. I was a little traumatized and I think I may have been a little, um, I'm, uh, not unclear about my mother, about the money. I, I, I said it was her life savings. For a lot of people, life savings means a lot of different things. Uh, it wasn't hundreds of thousands of dollars. I just want to say that it was less than 20,000, but it was a lot of money for my mother who's never had savings, who raised two kids by herself working minimum wage jobs. So yeah, it, it's a lot of money for her. But I think also when I, all the people who want to do the GoFundMe, I just felt like it, I may have inadvertently given the impression that it was hundreds of thousands of dollars that they scammed her out of. And it wasn't, it was less than 20, still a lot of money, uh, especially to some people like us. It's a lot of not, that's a lot of money. Uh, but I am so appreciative, so honored that you all want to chip in and help replace um, the money that was scammed from her. It's just really sweet. But again, that's not what this video, the video was about. It wasn't a plea for help. It was about hopefully spreading awareness so that this doesn't happen to other people. Um, so if you do want to help though, uh, here's what I'm going to ask. If you feel like you want to right a wrong, if you feel that that's how, I know in, in this situation, how else can you help, right? You can send comforting words and you can, you can, um, be supportive. And I know for some people you want to go a little further. Here is what you can do. Uh, make a donation to ACLU, to a local women's shelter, uh, to maybe, um, I should have looked this up, I just turned on the camera, I don't know, maybe there is a senior organization who helps seniors, uh, so maybe make a donation instead uh, to someone who, my mom is going to be okay, she still has income, this was a hit, but mostly like she said, she was traumatized for two days thinking there was that I was going to prison. Um, yeah. And so it's not, as it's not, even though the money hurts, it's not about the money. So if you, but if you feel you want to do something, do, just go ahead and make a donation to uh, a charity. All right. With that said, I got a couple other things I wanted to talk about as far as taking precautions. If this happens to you or someone, you know, I mentioned having three, uh, security questions or keywords or safe words. Uh, I just want to share with you more of the conversation. We actually role played this. I actually got my mother on the phone and we role played this. Okay. I'm fake AI Carolyn calling you, mom, I need help. I'm in jail. I, uh, you know, this is fake Carolyn. What are you going to do? Role play this, especially our parents are a little older. Dementia might be setting in. So role playing will help bring that home. It'll help solidify it. Um, you know, I role play sometimes with my therapist, t difficult conversations with clients and stuff. It helps make it more readily make it. What's the word I'm looking for? It's there. If you role play it, it's more there rather than just something you have to pull kind of like muscle memory rather than something you have to pull. So do the actual role play with your parents. This is fake Carolyn. What do you, what's the first thing you're going to ask me? That's right. You're going to ask me the security question. What happens if I get it wrong? And I threw out the wrong answer. And, uh, you know, and I have to be careful not to confuse her because she is, she, you know, she's been through a lot. Uh, you know, so I, I have to be careful. And this is just a word of precaution. You might have to be careful. You don't want to confuse them. Keep it simple. Speak slowly. And, uh, you know, I, okay, I threw out the wrong word. What are you going to do now? And we went through this a couple of times, and, and I want to share that with you. One thing I had to explain to my mother, again, different generation, been through a lifelong life of trauma that, that didn't necessarily get treated. Uh, so she's coming at this from a very different place than I am or that you might. A lot of people are like, this sounds fishy. Yeah, it sounds fishy as hell. <laughs> I'm listening to her on the phone going, you put a rock in a bat. You went to Walmart and, and you met a... It sounds like a movie. Are you kidding me? A lot of us are like, oh, you know, th these guys were pros. I also want to say that. Um, okay, let me back up. Side. These guys were pros. They told her to go to the bank and withdraw cash. They said the bank is going to ask you what it's for and you can't tell them because this will go on her record as a criminal forever. So you can't tell them this is for your daughter. Tell them it's for home improvement. 
These guys are good. These were pros. A lot of you think it might be people who knew us or even um, something else I don't even want to mention. But, um, you know, these it, it wasn't anyone we knew. It wasn't a relative. These are pros. They knew exactly what to do. They sent the couriers, weren't real couriers. I'm sure they were, they were money mules. And money mules are people you can hire to pick up illegal money. And the, in fact, the first one they sent, the guy was on the phone with my mother and the guy in the car wanted to look in the bag. They told her to weight it down so that they wouldn't, so that the courier wouldn't know it was cash. And the, to, to tell the courier it was legal documents. My, they told my mother to weigh it down. It was my mother who just picked up a rock and put it in the bag. They didn't tell her to put a rock. And the guy got on, and the courier showed up and said, yeah, I need to see inside the bag. And my mother said, no, they told me not to, not to open the bag for you. And the, the guy, the scammer, got on the phone with the courier and sent the courier away and sent another one. So I think these were money mules, and they were worried the money was going to get stolen. These guys are pros. They're professionals. And being the professionals they are, if they're going to target your parents or you, they're going to be prepared for your pushback. And they're going to be prepared if they get the, the wrong word. If it's fake Carolyn... And I throw out the wrong, and I, we went through this and I said, okay, I threw out, I gave you the wrong security word. What are you going to do next? And she stumbled and stammered. And I said, they're going to tell you, oh, I forgot. I was in an accident. I hurt my head. Mom, I need help. It's me. What are you going to do? She's like, no, I'm going to hang up the phone. Yes. So we went through, it's okay to hang up the phone, mom. It's okay to take us, take a, take a step back, hang up the phone, breathe, Call me, call your friends, call whoever. It's okay to do that. Call me first. If you ever get a call that I'm in trouble, no matter what, they tell you, call me. I will always have the security code. I will always have the right words. I will never get the wrong word and tell you to believe me anyway. I mean, we literally had to walk through all this, okay? And... You know, a comment this morning said, you know, they could say that you're in a coma. We walked through that. Even if they tell you I'm unconscious. Okay, you know what? I got to get some stuff together. Let me call my bank and I'll call you right back and call me. So I just wanted, I was, I was in a, I was traumatized yesterday. I was um, in shock when I, even when I shot the video. And so I, I didn't maybe go as in-depth into things as I wanted to do now. I wanted to share more details about what they told her. Um, I wanted to share more details about maybe the safe words aren't enough. Maybe the security phrases aren't enough. Role play this with your parents because our parents are older. Think of, I'm 55. I grew up without the internet. My mother grew up way, way, way before the internet. She grew up in a very, very different time. She doesn't watch TV. She doesn't watch the news. And she's vulnerable. And many of your parents might be very vulnerable. They don't, they're not savvy on the messed up world we live in these days who prey on people. So it's really important to have these conversations, do the role play. If they give, mom, I will never give you the wrong word. I will just know if that happens, hang up immediately. Have those important conversations. Do those important reenactments and role plays with your parents. And um, so uh, I think that's all I wanted to cover. Uh, just let them know that a scammer might try to bamboozle them even with the security words. That the security words you got to prepare for that. They're going to get the, the security word wrong. They're going to whine and cry like they're you, like they're fake Carolyn. Oh, I, I got an accident. Mom, I can't remember the word. I, no, you need to help me. No, hang up the phone. Hang up the phone. Rewatching the video and editing and realized I forgot to tell you the follow-up. So they did call the sheriff. She, she had a, I called one of her, her best friend. Uh, as soon as my, I got off the phone after our initial conversation, again, she was hysterical. I gave them all my money. Oh, it was terrible. Uh, so I called her friend. Her friend went up uh, to be with her and they called the sheriff. And the sheriff came out, took a statement. And what the, the deputy sheriff said is that next step is going to be turned over to investigators. And a lot of you talked about this. The first step is going to be going to Walmart and looking at security footage. 
Uh, I mean, I, there, I she's not going to get her money back, and they're probably not going to track down the people. I have a feeling these money mules, they'll probably track down the money mule and, and charge the money mule. That's probably as far as it's going to go. But the money mule, I'm sure, was hired online, by phone, on the dark web, and, uh, and paid, but uh, I don't know. Maybe there's a maybe there's a money trail. I these people knew what they were doing. They were sophisticated. I'm not. Nobody is holding out hope. And uh, even the deputy said, you know, I got scammed. They hacked into my account. And yes, this is very common, unfortunately, and it does happen. And here's where I'm at today. Yesterday, another reason I shot the video is because I was mad at YouTube. <laughs> be honest part of it it was I was really mad at YouTube I was like you did this to me um today I realized after reading your comments that I, I it it wasn't a target that nobody was targeting me my mom was targeted she's probably on some list somewhere because of her age and whatever uh this happens to people all over the world I think at least North America uh and it happens what might have happened is they may have googled me, they might have Googled her, found me, and used my public information, which they could do with anybody on Facebook or whatever. It's another thing. You might want to lock down your Facebook. But so they might have they might have found me. They might know that I live in an RV. They might have watched a video and knew my dog's name. They, also, my mom might have also said, what about Sadie? You know, um, I thought about that when we were talking. She wasn't sure. She might even have said, they might even have said, you know, your daughter was in an accident. And she was like, oh, no, her RV. You know, when they're really good. They're con artists. They're really good at picking up on these things that people say and, and using them to act like this is what every con artist on the planet does, right? Uh, you know, I'm thinking about a lot of the fake psychics on TV. You know, they just they just listen. They're very good listeners, and they're very good at picking up those pieces of information and using them to make it appear that they know something they don't. You know what I mean? So the police are on it. Not holding out any hope, but she she had a good description of the guy. She had a good description of the car. In fact, the the guy, the scammer on the phone said, yeah, you know, the, the, the courier is going to be coming in a Kia, in a blue Kia or whatever. So uh, an, another clue that they were probably just a money mule. That a throwaway, right? I mean, in, for him to say the car out loud like that. Uh, I mean, but my mom, my 74 year old mom sat in the parking lot of Walmart for six hours. It's the trauma. It's the trauma. But okay, so let's get on with the video. One more thing. My mom is doing better. She went out to dinner with a friend last night and I've been talking to her constantly and uh, she she is feeling better. It was the trauma. She was traumatized, completely traumatized, thinking that I was going to prison for murder. Um I'm debating about making a trip back east. So stay tuned for that. So again, thank you so much for letting me know that my videos, uh, even when I share this personal stuff and I'm upset um, that they help you. That's why I'm here. That's why I do it. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, have these conversations with your loved ones. All right. I will see you soon. I am still going to try to put up a Sunday video tomorrow. So yeah, we'll talk more about that. I'll, I'll, I'll do a preface to that video tomorrow, but thank you all so much. Have a wonderful day and, uh, be happy, be free, be kind and kick their butts. Bye.